If you track with the channel, of course you know where we are today. We are in the offices of Osmo and we've got Promode and Jerome, founders of Osmo, to tell us more about the future of the company. So how's it going today? I think it's always dynamic here. So much changing. Uh, we're learning every single day. Uh, a lot of new products in the works. So my kids have sort of grown up playing Osmo and they're having a look around the offices, enjoying all the different things that are happening and something that they were surprised about by the wide range of skills you've got. So, so what does it take to make an Osmo game? Typically starts with having a idea, a genesis, genesis idea, and then doing a lot of iterations on top of it. So for example, if you think about pizza game, we started this idea that kids love to play restaurants and trying to have this fantasy play around it. And then we started on this idea with Osmo for a couple of months and eventually we got a pizza game. And so Jerome, what's your sort of part of the partnership here, Osmo? So usually I, I look at the way we are processing the, the product and looking at every aspect of it, like how the software interacts with the, the hardware, what can we change in the hardware to make the software work better and so on. And everything around like a play experience. So we always think first, just like Pramod said, from what would be a good play experience and then from there, what do we put on the software, what do we put on the hardware, how do we make this a single experience. And so that's come quite a long way from those kind of simple games with, you know, you have your red lozenge at the top, sort of iconic now, and letters at the bottom. But now that, that you've sort of stretched that technology quite a lot with the pizza games, you've got pizza and vegetable pieces. Um, is that a challenge? Yes, yes it is. I mean, we evolved a lot our technology to be able to recognize and to, to work with those pieces that looks like a lot more pieces you would have as a toy. Uh, in the past we were using I would say world ties or uh, triangles and simple shapes which was very abstract and now we're trying to, to get a little bit deeper inside the fantasy of the kids and try to, to, uh, to stimulate them a little bit more. And it feels like that the, the packaging is changing as well. We've been looking today at these lovely new um, boxes you've got here. Um, so is that, is that part, of, part of how you're sort of revisioning what Osmo is about? Exactly. I mean if, you, if you've seen the, the previous packaging it was we, we get a lot of very great feedback about how look good it looks, but when you look at the use, how they were using it, it was kind of hard to use, how to put back together. So we, we came back to the drawing board and look at from the, the kids angle and say, okay, how, what do they want? And we, we realized that uh, parents and kids like to have like those modular uh, storing containers. So we went and created a, a solutions that we actually fit bigger games and smaller games and look fun as well. Yeah, and as a parent, I like the idea that they all sort of go away and that they stack. So you have this sort of collection of collection of games that can go away in a couple quite easily. And I noticed behind us we've also got, is it a classroom kit? Does that, so does that change how you provide Osmo to schools? I think, I think one of the things we uh, notice in classrooms is once you have, um, once you have a lot of kids playing with Osmo and have, let's say, 10 Osmo in a classroom, it's really hard to put them back together cleanly. So we have, we were looking at a storage solution primarily, like how do you store all the products in a meaningful way and how do you store all the games together. Um, and, and that's where the idea of classroom kids came. And in fact, what we've seen before we came to the idea of classroom kids, teachers already were building their own classroom kids. And then we realized a good time that we should do it ourselves. So that, I take it, means that schools are kind of buying multiple Osmo kits, you're not just buying one for a whole classroom. Is that the sort of pattern you're seeing? Yes, I think the way we think of this is Osmo should be on every single desk, and that's how we're building a product. Every, uh, unless you're doing a masterpiece, every kid is drawing their own masterpieces. And this is the direction we are going. Eventually, we'll have, the way we have one-to-one -one iPad, we'll have one-to-one -one Osmo. And that's our mission. And so this sort of takes us into that, thinking about kids and the sort of changing ecosystem of play and of consuming video. I mean in the YouTube space parents often seem surprised that kids will just as happily watch other people play a game as to consume it themselves. Is that, is that a challenge trying to create a toy or a product like this in such a dynamic sort of changing environment? Yeah I, I think one of the core concerns behind Osmo has been uh, in around 2013 we noticed that the way iPad and iPhones and other devices were changing children's behavior was very dramatic. Uh, the kind of contents you can build and the kind of contents kids want to consume. Uh, and that's the genesis of Osmo itself. We, we think we have a new opportunity of rethinking what the play actually means for, for children. So in some sense, this is a huge opportunity for us that is very dynamic. That we can introduce new ideas, we can 
have a lot more inspiration. Uh, that makes it a little harder, but I think it's actually the right opportunity for us as a, as a startup. And so, so, do you think Osmo is going to sort of grow as kids grow? So my, my kids are really connected first with those word games, and obviously a few years has gone by, and it does feel like there's a that some of the more recent games are sort of ageing up a bit. Is, is, are you broadening sort of the age range? Um, the, the way we think about this is everything we do at Osmo maps to a life scale. Um, so as a parent, you always want kids core life skills like swimming, music, uh, coding, literacy. And when you think of life skills, you won't really stop your child after two swimming classes. Okay? They haven't really learned swimming. Uh, similarly with Osmo, we take a much longer perspective. Like you start with word game uh, much, uh, much more earlier when you're trying to learn alphabets. And then eventually you actually get progress in the, in the game. So everything we're doing is having this life skill of learning over a couple of years as a mindset. Uh, as a startup, you can't really build all this together in day one. So as you're seeing from every single year, we, we sort of expand our products. And, and really our goal is to get go from kindergarten to uh, fifth grade and they're sort of growing with, with Osmo. So there's now quite a lot of different Osmo games that you can play from those first three. It's, it's expanded and it, I imagine it will continue to expand. Are they, are they all kind of separate experiences or do they relate to each other? They somewhat relate to each other in, in some, I would say, thin ways. But what we try to do is to, to assess skills that we think is going to be needed for future. And usually it's, the skills are not really like the hard skills you would learn at school. Weirdly, a computer can actually learn the skills. <laughs> but we're trying to look for skills that are more defining humans, uh, humans. So like creativity, a little bit of coding, logic, a little bit of imagination, but also interpersonal, interpersonal personal skills. Like in pizza, you need to read like the, the emotions of the characters in front of you to understand, did I did do wrong, did I do good or not? It's not all about grades, it's also about trying to find the subtleties. So that's kind of how we are thinking of new experiences. And I know that as kids sort of build those relationships with technology and with storytelling, a lot of that takes them into the space of brands and franchises. So they, 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 we all grow up with lots of stories that we share. Um, is that kind of collaboration something that might be on the horizon for Osmo in the future? That's something we can't ignore, for sure. <laughs> uh, yes, we can't really say much today, but that's something we are looking into. Yeah, I think the way uh, I think of this is we need to... We, we can't really engage children if we don't have characters and narratives and, and things that actually go beyond the product itself. Uh, in the Osmo ecosystem itself, we don't think of independent products. We think of Osmo as a whole universe of products, universe of characters, universe of stories. And for children, is they are sort of experiencing this new way of thinking, new way of playing. But it's really the universe that actually is the core of very proportion of Osmo. So we are definitely building our own brand and a product and definitely over time we are going to partner with other brands as well. Well we're very much looking forward to seeing what the future holds and all those future games and also seeing how my kids respond to that and seeing them just exploring the studio today has been a really, a really sort of treat for them and also for me as their dad. So thanks a lot for having us. Thank you. Thank you for coming over. Thank you for coming over.